Spirit, uh, he, is a, the, he is the third person, for lack of a better word, of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is God. And the Holy Spirit plays a very important role. And among many other roles that we can read about in the book of John, his main function, if I have to summarize it, his main function is to empower you, to anoint you, to do what you cannot do in your natural ability. Say amen, somebody. So if we are going to provoke the supernatural, if we are going to stimulate the supernatural, it will take the Holy Spirit anointing upon us in order for us to enter into the zone of the supernatural. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The supernatural can never be done by natural means. That's why when you do the supernatural by natural means, you are entering into a zone of sorcery and a zone of magic. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But the true supernatural of God takes the anointing of God in order for it to, you know, in order for it to function. Say amen, somebody. And so as believers, we need the anointing. You are not going to be an effective believer if the anointing of God is not upon your life. This life that we have chosen to live, which is the life that Christ has given us, when we gave our lives to Christ, cannot be lived any other way except by being empowered by the anointing of God. Say amen, somebody. So it's important. The anointing is important. The anointing factor is the God factor. When you are operating in the anointing, you are operating in the zone of God. The anointing factor is what separates us from the rest of the world. You are able to do the things that the world cannot do because you are anointed. The anointing factor gives us the advantage over the world. You have something so peculiar that people will kill for out there in the world. You have something so peculiar that people will put money for out there in the world. And that's why, you know, when the, when the disciples were operating and showing the, the miracles and operating in the miracles... There was a man by the name of Simon the sorcerer. He got the money. He wanted to give the disciples the money so that they can so, so that he he can have the power that was being manifested by the disciples. So you have something. When that anointing is upon your life, you have something that the world will put money for. That's why, you know, when, 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 when people uh, show bits and pieces of, and I'm going to call it magic, when they show bits and pieces of magic, people will even pay 5,000 rand just to have an appointment with such a person. People will put money for the supernatural. If, if I want to be rich, I mean, as, as a pastor, if I really want to be rich, I can, I can, well, I am rich, but let me, <laughs> see, when you're, when you're a man of faith, you have to be careful with the words that you use, but if I, okay, let me put it this way, if I want to con you and get more money into my pocket, I can do it. Take me three weeks to put up a strategy. And I know <laughs> that when I put that strategy, as long as in that strategy there is something that suggests the supernatural, people will pay for it. If I can tell you that in the next five days, I'm going to make all your problems vanish, You'll pay me money. If I can plant somebody who will tell you that Pastor George prayed for me and in three days my problems, I stopped suffering. You'll pay me money. 
Carlton Pearson says, you know, he knew how to make people cry. When he, when he evolved into what we call the gospel of inclusion, he said, you know, he says, I knew the game. A lot of pastors know the game. And, and we, we're, not, we're not in the game here. We, this is, we, we preach in the word of God. And that's why I give you Bible. So he said, he said I, I knew how, to, how to, to make people cry. And I'm one of those people that Carlton made me cry. I mean, I, I remember Carlton Pearson would make me cry. <laughs> Carlton Pearson is what was the, one of the preachers that will make me bunk school and go. I, I would leave university classes and I would go to this meeting that Carlton Pearson was having, you know, in Randbeck. Remember his sermons? His story was one of the sermons. And the other sermon was the virgin. The virgin's name was Mary. Virgin's name was Mary. And he preached about seasons and cycles. I mean, those messages, he preached them in 1991 and 1992. I'm talking about 1991 and 92. I never forget those messages because he knew how to make me, you know, uh, run around that building. And there are many preachers, there are many preachers even this day, who, who knows how to, how to pump you, how to primer stove you. You know primer stove, the one, you go, bah, 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 bah. And when you put a match, because it's already primed up, when you put a match, you go, <laughs> And so people would pay money for the supernatural. But when God anoints us, he is not anointing us so that people can pay us the money, but he's anointing us to function. The unction of the Holy Spirit is upon our lives for us to function. Say amen. For us to function in our giftings that God has given us, for us to manifest the works of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He has anointed us so that we can be a blessing to other people. When God anointed me to be a minister of the gospel, it was not for me to shine. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When God says, George Mosina, the anointing to preach and the grace to preach is upon your life, was not for me you know, to stand in this place and show you how many suits I have and, and how many things I have and all kinds of things. My primary function is to preach the word in season and out of season. My primary function is to usher you into the presence of the Lord. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So whenever God anoints you to manifest the supernatural, that supernatural is not for you to shine. That's why when we talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, when God gives you, the, anoints you to operate in the gift of word of knowledge or word of prophecy, or, 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 or speaking in tongues and interpretation of tongues and the power gifts and the, and the revelation gifts and all of that, all those gifts are not given to you so that you can, you know, uh, uh, think or, or operate as if you are above everyone else. That's why I say the measure of a, the, the quality of a Christian is not on the gift or is not based on the gift that you're operating in. And unfortunately... We have exalted people that God has gifted them a particular gifting as if they are higher than all of us. And some of the most powerful people in the body of Christ are not on stage, but they're sitting there and they are your prayer partners and, and intercessors and prayer warriors and, and people who do things behind the scenes. And yet some of the people that have, you know, some of these giftings, they lack in character. The gifts of God are without repentance. When God gives you a gift, he gives it to you and it sits on you. That's why you would find a person who would go out drinking yesterday and do all kinds of things. But the moment he steps in his place of gifting, man, he can do it while drunk. So when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he comes to anoint you. And I said the anointing factor is the God factor. The anointing is that lubricator that makes everything work. The anointing is what will keep you going as a child of God. The anointing is what propels you. The anointing is what takes you 
from a, a, a from, from a world of toil into a world of you know uh, 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 easiness. When the anointing is upon your life, there is no more toil. When the anointing is working and functioning in your life, there is no more toil. Why? Because God has his hand on you. That's basically what the anointing is. The anointing is God working on your behalf. Say amen, somebody. So when you have the anointing of God, that anointing is the lubricator that makes everything work. The anointing is what separates us from everyone else. It is what makes us victorious in each and every area of our lives. The anointing is what makes us to operate in the supernatural. If we have to operate in the supernatural, we've got to be anointed. The anointing is what attracts others to us. When you are operating in your gifting, in your area of grace, and in the area of your anointing, that anointing attracts others. Say amen, somebody. Amen. The anointing is what makes us perform miracles. True miracles are performed when we are in a place of anointing. Now, Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 to 20. I want to read this because I want to debunk another myth where the anointing of God is concerned. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. Ready? Let's read on the board, on the screens. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Continue. So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Verse 17. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also, verse 18, I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Verse 19. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind here on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose here on earth will be loosed in heaven. Verse 20. That he was the, Jesus the, the Christ. He commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. Many people believe, or they are made to believe, that only those that are in the fivefold ministry are anointed to function. Only those that have got some specific position in the church have the anointing or the unction to function. People believe that the anointing is for specific people. That's the myth that has been created. Number two, there are people who believe that the only way that Jesus performed miracles was because he was God. You have heard me from this pulpit say that Jesus was 100% or is 100% God and was 100% man. So people say, but Pastor George, I read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and all the Bible, and I hear about all these miraculous things that Jesus has been doing, but I'm not Jesus. I've heard people say that times of miracles have passed yet, have already passed. People, you know, relegate miracles as, as something that, you know, is specific in one's lifetime. People think that miracles only happens, you know, in, 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 in one of those days. And when God is in a good mood, maybe he will just give you that just little bitty miracle where your headache goes away. Jesus says to his disciples, Who do men say that I... The son of man, am. Jesus does not say, who do people say I, the son of God, am? 
So he says to them, but who do you say that I am? I've been working with you for a long time, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, and I believe that this was by revelation from God. Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So Peter was saying, you are the anointed one. You are the one that has got the super on him. You are the one that God has put the unction to function on. You are the one that is anointed. The word Christ is not Jesus' last name. The word Christ is not Jesus' same name. The word Christ means the anointed one. The word Christ means the Messiah, the anointed one. So when he was saying, you are the Christ, Peter was saying, you are the anointed one, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him and said to him, blessed are you, Jonah. He said, when you have that revelation, Peter, you are empowered now to walk in the supernatural. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He said to him, blessed are you, Simon bar Jonah. Simon, the son of Jonah. That's what bar Jonah means. Simon, the son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. When you have a revelation that you are anointed and that miracles and the supernatural is not something for others, you will start seeing the supernatural manifesting in your life. Say amen, somebody. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When somebody is sick in your family, don't wait for some preacher to come from Ghana or come from wherever it is to come and pray for your sister who is sick in your home. You are anointed, you lay your hands on that person, and the anointing to function will work in your life. Say amen, somebody. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And that's why in this church, this church is a Christ-centered church. It's not a personality-centered church. This church is not about just the pastor. I have my function in this church. But this is a Christ-centered church because if we put Christ first and we, we, we want to be like him, all of us can be like him, then we can do what he said we can do. Say amen, somebody. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Jesus says, greater and mighty works you will do. He did not say that pastors will do and only the few of the nine gifts, they will do all of these things. No, he said greater things you will do if you are a believer. Why? Because the Bible says that all things are possible. To who? To pastors? To evangelists? To who? To all of those that believe. How many believers do I have in this church? All things are possible to you. You can provoke the supernatural. You can do things that the world is waiting for to see out there because you are anointed. Say, I am anointed. Come on, say it like you mean it. Say, I am anointed. I am anointed. So the greatest gift or the, the greatest blessing from God to man by God is revealed knowledge or revelation knowledge. When you have revelation knowledge of who you are in Christ and what you have in Christ, you will walk in this life a winner all the time. That's why one of the subjects I have to preach in this church is the authority of a believer. Because people don't know that they have authority. People don't know, the body of Christ don't know that they are anointed. And as a result of us not knowing that we are anointed, and that's why we are not manifesting or provoking the supernatural in our lives. So Jesus says to Peter, Peter, you are, ble you are a blessed man. Why is he a blessed man? You are a blessed man because you know something that many people don't know. He says, now you know that I'm not just doing all of these things, you know, because, be because I... I am from God. I'm doing all of these things because I'm anointed. And that's why when they got anointed by the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2, they started doing what Jesus did. Paul raised a young man from the dead. Raising people from the dead was not an occurrence that was, you know, peculiar to a certain grouping of people. The scripture says that Paul was preaching. This verse is loved by preachers, by the way, and I'll tell you why it's loved by preachers. The Bible says that Paul was preaching, I believe it was on the first floor or the third floor, in a building. There was a young man who was seated on the window in that building, and he fell asleep. 
Preachers love that part because it says, you know, when people fall asleep in their services, they say, I'm not alone. Even Paul, Paul the anointed one, Paul the chosen one, he was preaching and in his meeting, in his service, there was somebody that, you know, slept in there. Not in this church, amen? amen. So this young man fell from, from a higher position and he fell down and the scripture says that he died. And Paul, having noticed that this man died, the scripture says that he went and he fell on this man. He, he went downstairs and he went onto this young man and he prayed that life may come back to him. And he rose from the dead. Now, I'm not even talking about Jesus and the story of Lazarus here. I'm talking about Paul, the apostle Paul, who was anointed you know, just like you and I anointed. And the scripture says that he rose somebody from the dead. It takes the anointing of God in order to do these things. Say amen, somebody. So Jesus was saying, Peter, you are blessed because you have this revelation about how you can walk in the supernatural. You walk in the supernatural when the anointing of God is upon your life. Now I understand why Jesus said it is important that I may go. It is important. It is expedient for me to go. He said it is important for me to go. Why? Because I can only be in one place at one particular time. But he, the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he's going to be everywhere, every time, and he's going to anoint you to do what I did in the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He says that anointing when it's upon your life, now all of a sudden, you know, you are changed to be a different man. Say amen, somebody. Amen. So he says, Peter, you are blessed. The Spirit of God revealed to you not to flesh. He says, I want you to understand that all things are possible when the anointing of God is upon your life. Say amen, somebody. So the anointing is not just for specific people, but the anointing is for everyone that receives the Holy Spirit and he is anointed because of that. Say amen. amen. Let me give you some few scriptures about the anointing and I'm going to release you to go home. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. Before you go there, go to the book of Acts chapter 10, verse 38. I've read this book so many times, or this chapter so many times, but I want you to understand that it takes the anointing in order to do the supernatural. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. In Luke chapter 4, verse 17, and there was delivered unto him a book. In verse 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Jesus was anointed. Jesus was anointed. Say, Jesus was anointed. Jesus was anointed to remove burdens and destroy yokes. And so today you are anointed to remove burdens and destroy yokes. Say amen, somebody. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. Verse 27, it shall come to pass in that day that this burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of what? The anointing oil. It says that the yoke, whatever yoke it is that you might be experiencing or whatever yoke that other people might be experiencing, the Bible says that it will be destroyed because of of the anointing oil or because of the anointing. Now notice that the anointing of God when is upon your life, it does not break yokes. You see, when you break something, that means you can put it together again. But when the anointing of God is in operation, it destroys the yoke of the devil. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So the anointing of God is there to deal with things that needs to be dealt with in your life. Say amen, somebody. It says that, and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. So that means the anointing is important. That means it is 
the anointing that I need in order for me to deal with so many things in my life. 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 6. 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 6. I'm going to ask the worship team, the praise team, just to come and uh, take their positions. 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 6. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you, and you shall prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. Say, turned into another man. Say, turned into another man. When the Spirit of God comes upon your life, you will turn to be another man. That means you will operate in the zone of God. You will do things that you will not do in your natural state. When the Spirit of God or the anointing of God is upon your life, you shall be turned into another man. David was just a shepherd boy. But when the anointing of God came upon his life, he became a great warrior that brought Goliath down. There are some Goliath in your life that you got to deal with them by the anointing of God upon your life. Say amen. amen. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, you turn to be another man. Say amen, somebody. It is the anointing that makes a difference. 1 John chapter 2, verse 20 to 27. We're going to sing that song. Heal me, Jesus, and I'll be healed when I'm done with this. 1 John chapter 2, verse 20 to verse 27. Verse 20 says, But you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. Say, I know all things. I know all things. Say, I know all things. I know all things. Look at your neighbor say, You might not believe me, but I know all things. And I am anointed. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm anointed. Say, I'm anointed by the Holy One. I have an unction, tell them, from the Holy One, and I know all things. Come on, meditate upon that for a while. Just meditate upon that. You know all things. And this is God saying it. He says, you know all things. I know your friend said, you don't know everything, but you know all things. And God is not the son of man that should lie. If he says, you know all things, you know all things. That means there's something that needs to be coming out of your mouth. I know all things. I know all things. When you are faced with a challenge in your life, say, I know all things. When there are decisions that you need to be making in your life, say, I know all things. I know all things. I know all things. Because of the Holy Spirit in the inside of me. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. So the Bible says that you know all things. And in verse 27, it says, But the anointing which you have received of him abides in you. That anointing is in the inside of you, ladies and gentlemen. That anointing is not somewhere out there, you know, in a distance. But that anointing is in the inside of you. Say amen, somebody. And the Bible says, out of your belly shall rivers of living water flow. Because that anointing is in the inside of you. That anointing abides in the inside of you. The anointing to break and destroy the yoke of the devil is in the inside of you. It says, that anointing abides in you and you need not that any man teach you. That means you need to be Christ-centered. But as the same anointing teaches you all things. And it's truth. And it's no lie. And even as it has taught you, you shall abide in him. So the anointing of God is in the inside of you. Philippians chapter 4 verse...